Now I've got these files open here, we can go through them. Uh, the first one that has a conflict is uh, the .rspec file, which is basically a configuration for running rspec. And you can see quite nicely how Git handles conflicts. <clears throat> so you have these less than signs and these greater than signs which bracket a conflict. And then the, the equal sign kind of separates the two possible things. So the head, which is our repository, had this line in there and there's nothing between the equal and the, the merge ID that we had. So it means we added this line in our repository, but the my remote repository didn't have that. So it wasn't sure if that should be added or not. Um, and we do want to do that. So that's easy to fix. We just delete that line there and we just delete those. And, and that was a, a pretty easy one to do. Uh, and sometimes it can be helpful to just do a git add dot rspec as you complete a conflict then you don't forget to do do that later so I'm going to close that out uh, and uh, we're at gem file next and the the big difference is is this line right here sas rails 5.0 versus 4.0 you can see that our version on Nitrous had the 5.0 version. The version that I used on my old repository had 4.0. So we want to keep that version. But notice there's some other stuff here. Capybara and RSpec Rails. If we go further down, those were also in um, the versions. I have RSpec Rails down here. And I have Capybara up here. So I can just go ahead again and delete this conflict marker and then delete all of, of this that was in the in the old version as well so now it looks like it, it should have before I've added my capybara up here my rspec rails down here wherever the case may be and now this looks like it should so we'll save this we will add it and close it down. The next one is the, the user model um, and again there were, were head didn't have anything because I played a little fast and loose in trying to get my repository up to speed with, with yours. Yours probably looked a little bit more like this. Um, in this case we do want these validates here those uh, that were part of my remote repository so we're going to keep those in the, the user class uh, and uh, so that's an instance where we keep the old version so this is an example where uh, git can't decide just keep the old or just keep the new sometimes we're we're doing some from each of those and this is an app model user dot rb uh, close that down and now we have application and you haven't seen this file at all so uh, the, the, the crazy thing in, in here is yours had this new configuration value set up. I added this configuration value to my old repository. So I am just going to keep it the way that uh, Rails had it before. Delete that and I am going to just, I'm just going to comment out this old configuration because if I get some uh, error messages it will be easy for me to turn those back on and no harm no fall but I've, I've kept the old configuration everything else in here is unchanged so I can save that and I'm gonna do a git add and I believe this is a config application .rb. alright now for a more tricky one <clears throat> the schema file normally you should never edit the schema file and I, I can't say that strongly enough so I'll say it again never edit the schema file right this file is auto generated uh, but Ruby does depend upon its existence um, so it was auto generated for my repository to, to look like this but with the updating in, in Rails the nitrous repository 
looks something like that. And the big differences are this version information right here and right here, and the fact that created at and updated at are not nullable fields anymore, where they technically were in, in my old repository. So we want to just keep the values that were auto-generated by our database and get rid of the ones that were in, in my repository here. So we just want to keep it the, the way it was. All right. So we get add db schema. And then we have our, our user spec. <coughs> and again, we have up here what was in my repository, oh, in the Nitrous repository, and down here what was in my re repository. And you might not be able to see all the, the differences because there's so many. Uh, so you, you have to be really careful to, to see what the differences are. Uh, we know we want to require Rails helper, so that's good. And we go down a little bit and describe user do. You you're, would almost be better, and I'm, I'm going to do it because it's going to be easier to do a, a split screen. So I'm going to use Vim to do that. Uh, Vim app models, uh, uh, sorry, spec models user spec right here. And I am going to split screen this. So at the top, I have what was in my Nitrous repository and in here is what was in the, my repository that I <coughs> merged from. And so we can see if there are any differences and just make sure that they all correspond. The reason why there's so many lines uh, different between the two are that uh, up here, well, the, this line we, we know at the require Rails helper from an earlier video why that's in there. Uh, but in in here, the difference and it's really subtle, so you need to um, it, be very careful when you do these kinds of merges. Is that it's changed from user dot new to user dot create, and then this looks the same and this looks the same and so forth. So why does Git say they're different? And the reason why is in here what I had was two spaces in my repository and in here I had four spaces and spaces are different. Git is not a programming language. It doesn't know that in this case the spaces don't make any difference and so having this line versus having this line don't mean anything different. It sees it different and so it's it's going to keep them the same. So we're going to have to look carefully through each line of code and, and say are they the same or different. So I'm going to move down to here on the top and do something similar here. You can see down here now, uh, I don't like this formatting, but Vim is telling me that there was a tab on on this line uh, and in the similar line right here it's four spaces. So that's the only difference between those two. It's not like there's some weird character going on here. So now if we uh, check these out. Empty name is the same. Blank name is the same. So let's go on to empty email. And we can look at those and, and that is the same. Blank email is the same. So now we can go to empty password and empty password is the same. Blank password. And then we're going to go this next one. Describe long name. And up we came to this separator. So at this point, this describe long name is all new that I had from before. And if I uh, keep going down, you can see that goes to the end of the file right there. Okay. So what we what we might want to do then is uh, now that we've looked at it all in in a split screen way. I'm going to quit out of here and go back to the, the visual one to, to show what we're doing. We're going to get rid of this 
uh, line right here because we want the Rails helper. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this whole describe down here to right there because I'm going to just accept what was passed into me from the from my repository and not keep what was in my uh, nitrous and so now I've got the rails helper I've got all these tests that I set up before notice that because I have tabs in here they they look weird uh, this looks unindented or anti indented if you change this to uh, tabs being <coughs> eight spaces or um, four spaces you, you can you can change that uh, because I treat tabs as being eight spaces in in my development environment and so now this starts to to look like it's indented properly so that's an easy way to to make it look like it should and then we just want to get rid of this line right here and now we've got both these tests that uh, we wrote together in the videos and that I think you wrote down in your code as well as these new tests which are ultimately the tests that you need to pass for this next assignment so we can save this and close it down we're going to get add spec models user spec and then finally we have this um, spec helper file that we want to do and we can see here that it's got um, a big set of files that were or, or lines that were created for us by our spec and then if we scroll down it's it's hard to see because of the color syntax highlighting here that goes to here and then this is what was in my repository on on github all the way down to here uh, and so this is something that was set up for our spec for us we didn't mess with it so let's keep what our spec I didn't mess with it on repository so let's keep what our spec did we'll keep all the way down to right here and delete what was in in my repository and I'm trying to be careful when I scroll down here right there and delete that that we we have what was was in there before and then there's a l another and this is the last important thing to see there's another set of conflicts you can't just find one conflict and be done you need to look through the entire file this was what it, our spec did for us this is what was in my repository in github I actually I'm going to do kind of a combination of those two. I'm going to go ahead and un do that. I'm and I'm going to delete these, but I'm going to remember that I want that random ordering. So I'm going to delete these. And um, what you may not know is this equals end is tied to this equals begin. So you can see by the color syntax highlighting, it's it's the same as these comments here. This is a, a multi-line comment that's designed for documentation in Ruby. Uh, so, in effect, this line config.order is commented out. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of do the best of, of both worlds here, and I am going to I am going to cut those out, or uh, press the right button here and after that then I can uh, paste that in yep, there we go and now I've got the config ordering random just like I had on the the github repository but using the syntax from the newer version of our spec so now I can save that close that down and add it spec and that is spec helper and now I've dealt with all the conflicts that uh, get notified me of and so now I can complete the merge and now this is the last important thing about understanding how git works because there were conflicts git 
did not store the temporary setting where some of the files have been updated and some of the files were conf full of conflicts. It added to the stash the files that cleanly were modified and I just added to the stash the files that had conflicts after I cleaned up those conflicts. So now we have a stash full of modified files that we want to commit. So we can do a git commit right here. And I'm going to put this full screen just so it looks a little better. And we can see it gives us an automatic merge commit here. And it tells us that we had conflicts with these files right here. And that will be part of the merge commit. Uh, you can debate about whether you want to keep those in there. I like to keep those in there because it's very clear why, uh, you know, what problems we tried to deal with with this commit. And uh, I don't tend to do more specific commit messages with my merges because the merge is not adding new functionality. It's just taking functionality from one place, taking functionality from another place, and joining them together. And so the merge is in my mind a sufficient document. Other people can disagree with that but that's my uh, opinion. And now I have completed doing the merge and so uh, that is what we need to do in order to get everything in our repository up and running. At this point we can go ahead and try to run our test bundle exec rspec and what we expect to find is that we have some failures not a surprise because I've given you some new tests you have to write the code now to pass these tests and so now your repository should match mine on here on nitrous and you should be able to make this further progress now